Hey everyone, in this video we are going to do a mesh-tastic range test using a T-beam as a repeater and a couple of these T-LoRa radios. Since I did my previous videos about Meshtastic, the development team has made a ton of changes, including one that I think is really cool, which is a graphical user interface for their firmware flashing. So that's the way I updated my firmware on my boards. All right, so the testing plan is to use this phone with this radio and this battery here, and then this is going to be a T-beam that's gonna act as a repeater, and then this phone with this radio and battery over here. So I'm gonna leave uh, this with my wife. She's going to text me from our house and then I'm gonna take this setup with me. So this is gonna act as a repeater so it can be in a high place for each of these radios to connect to. Connect to and then it'll relay the transmission. It'll basically hopscotch or leapfrog or whatever childhood game you wanna call where it does this kind of an action. <laughs> So we have our test radios all set up and ready to go. There's just one more thing we need. Yeah. What is this you ask? A headlamp, so I can see at night. A poncho, so I don't get wet. An emergency blanket. Fire starter, obviously. Matches, in case my fire starter breaks. A Bic lighter, in case my matches break. Water filter, so I can stay hydrated. A map, so I know where I'm at. A notepad and a pencil, so that way I can write letters home. A bunch of food, so I don't starve to death. Some wool socks with a change of underwear. A uh, hoodie, so I can stay warm. More socks with a t-shirt. Uh, water, so I don't die of dehydration. All right, so I can hear you now. Cody, do you really think you need to bring this pack with you? I mean, look at it, it's big, bulky, it's gonna be really annoying and slightly uncomfortable, uh, even though it's designed to be comfortable. And the answer to that is absolutely. This is not sarcasm. I don't think you really understand. We're talking about 15 to $20 of the highest quality. No, not the highest quality. We're talking about the longest range that $15 to $20 can buy you. This isn't chump change here. We've got a mass-produced, extremely unreliable antenna here, and who knows how far it'll reach. <laughs> For $20, you're getting Wi-Fi, you're getting Bluetooth, you're getting a LoRa chip, so the reliability here is completely unknown, and it's entirely possible that these may fail at any given moment. I think I could end up going as far as two, maybe even three miles from my house, and I just don't want to risk being lost, obviously in the wilderness, for cert almost certainly an extended period of time, three, four days, uh, without any kind of equipment whatsoever to not die. <laughs> the phone that I'm using with this is not activated either, so I can only call 911, which I will almost certainly not do, ever, no matter what. Uh, I'm gonna completely disregard the fact that I'm gonna have my regular phone, and also I'm gonna be like right down the street, more or less, with civilization all around me, cars passing every 10 to 15 seconds. That doesn't matter. Uh, I don't wanna risk it, okay? I may have to use this knife that YouTube probably doesn't like me showing to baton firewood to stay alive. I need to stay warm because it's, you know, this time of year, it gets all the way down to like 62 degrees Fahrenheit at night and that is slightly chilly. Really, you have to ask yourself, will you be able to sleep at night knowing that I had to walk three miles on a sidewalk in my neighborhood? like I would normally do with my dog. But this time it's different because I'm doing it for science. <laughs> science. If you know me in real life and you're watching this, you're not surprised. If I don't make it back from this, you wouldn't be watching this. So since this one is gonna be our repeater, we wanna get it as high as possible and I think I know just the place. I'm thinking right up there.
All right, so that may or may not work. I guess we'll find out. It's about as high up as I can get. So it's the following morning and we are on our way to our first checkpoint to see if we get reception on our radios. All right, so we are at our first checkpoint. We're at 0.38 miles. So we wanna see a little check mark show up right here to signal that our radios are connected still. All right, so we got a check mark, so that means we're still good. Let's keep going. All right, so we made it to our second checkpoint at three quarters of a mile. Let's see if we're still getting reception. Oh, good to go. We're coming up on the one mile mark here, and I'm gonna be kind of surprised if it even makes it this far because there's just a ton of trees. Um, if you look behind me, you can see that line of trees. And then all through my neighborhood, there's a lot of like 40 to 50 foot trees. So if it makes it, I'll be impressed just to, to even do a mile. So according to the internet, we are about a mile away from my house with lots of trees, bridges, and buildings in between. So let's see if we get any reception. All right, so we are 1.25 miles out. And honestly, I'm gonna be pretty amazed if it makes it because there's so many trees. All right, so it looks like somewhere between one mile and one and a quarter miles is about our limit. Uh, it's kind of what I expected for being in town. Just to put it in perspective, that is the direction of my house. So there's like tons and tons of trees. So our test ended at one mile, which may be a little bit disappointing to some viewers, but you have to understand that every environment is different. So if you live in a big open area, you're gonna get way more range than I did. Um, I wouldn't say that my situation was the worst case scenario, but it was pretty close. I mean, it wasn't New York City with buildings or anything like that, but there was a ton of trees, like dozens and dozens of trees that this signal was trying to get through with these really low quality antennas and extremely low transmission signals. Now these things, like a low, for ham radio, a low power radio is like five watts. And these things are operating at like five milliwatts. So one thousandth of the signal power of a low power radio. It's extremely low power. That's how they last the batteries last for so long. The fact that it could even go a mile realistically to me is impressive. So another thing to consider with this is even if you can only reach three quarters of a mile, these radios are so inexpensive. I mean, this thing right now is like $15. So you could buy, I don't know, five, six, seven of them and just leapfrog these things. Go out three quarters of a mile and put a radio up uh, somewhere obscure where nobody's gonna notice it. I mean, this radio, this battery, you plug them in and this battery is 4.4 amp hours, which is, I'm guessing when these things go to sleep, they use next to nothing. So you could have this mesh network up and running off of this battery for a couple of weeks, I would think, if not months. The point being, it wouldn't be very hard to grow your range just by adding additional radios at strategic locations. Another thing that would greatly increase your range because these operate line of sight is if you had somewhere really high up in the air that you could place one of these. Uh, like really high up in the air, like really high up in the air. I am not telling you to do that. So overall, I am still pretty happy with the radios considering it was $15 per radio, I think 30 for the T-beam. And I have a off-grid communications method that's only getting easier to use. The app is improving, the firmware flashing is getting easier, especially with the graphical user interface. It really is a viable option if you're willing to put a little bit of time into getting them set up. But once they're up and running, they're pretty flawless to be honest. So if you caught the note in the video that said, if you're interested in these batteries, stick around to the end, this is the part for you. I think I'm going to do a giveaway for those batteries because I bought a bunch, like hundreds of, not hundreds, but a hundred of these batteries for a different project and it didn't end up working out. So now I have a giant box of these uh, and I don't have that many Mesh-tastic radios. I have about five. So I think what I'm gonna do is a giveaway, but I'm going to ask a question. And the question is, where did my logo come from? I didn't just come up with that that shape. Uh, it was actually based on something. So 
I'm gonna put my email up on the screen. Uh, there's two possible answers for this. So the first 10 people to correctly answer where the, my logo design came from, I'm gonna ship you a pair of these for free. These really are one of the best batteries you can use for this. They're small, compact, and they're a decent capacity. It's like I'm trying to sell them or something. I'm giving them away. All right, everyone, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Hey everyone, in this video we are going... Hey everyone, in this video we are going to find out how far Mesh-tastic can reach using these... Hey everyone, in this video we are going to do a range test on... <laughs> hey everyone, in this video we are going to do a range test for Mesh... It's getting embarrassing. It's gonna have to work. I don't think you understand. We're talking about 15 to $20 of the longest range that... <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh... One of the main reasons that these batteries are so nice for this kind of an application is because they already have the wires so it's easy to add your connectors. And... My wife is texting me.